All right, in this recording, we're going to go over um, Marvelous Software. Um, this is Marvelous Designer 6. And uh, why don't you guys go ahead and work um, just on this as a homework assignment. It shouldn't take more than uh, 15, 20, 25 minutes uh, to play with. I want you to kind of see what it does. And it's pretty amazing. Uh, it does a lot of the fabric work for you. I uh, wish I had had this product back in my day. Um, so what we're going to do there is uh, we do need to get a model in there. And so what I'm doing is just finding uh, default ZBrush character. Um, you will start designing your own soon, but uh, for now, I just want to uh, use what's available here. So I'm um, going to grab a character here, just to double click. And as you guys know, I have to scooch this over to the hide button. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and draw it in. Okay, so this time uh, hit the edit button right off the bat, and you can see uh, this we're in either a leotard or a swimsuit, I'm not sure which. Now we're gonna go to subtool, and I go ahead and delete. Uh, the hair. Okay, don't have to delete all that. We could probably just go up here and ex uh, select the uh, the body, and we're gonna go ahead and export. I always show deleting it. Uh, I don't know why. So uh, I'm gonna call it underscore a underscore uh, she, and save as obj. Save. All right, and I'm gonna hit a uh, command tab. Uh, get into uh, my marvelous, or you can just click on the bottom and go to uh, marvelous designer. All right. So what we're going to do is um, go ahead and import the OBJ. Okay. And I'm assuming you can actually uh, bring in uh, other characters. It doesn't have to be humanoid. It could be a rock or a mannequin or whatever you want uh, for this to work. All right. So I'm going to go to my desktop. And go to a underscore she. Okay, makes it obj, not the mtl file. You won't be able to open that up. All right. So one of the big things is make sure it's open, load avatar, and uh, just coming from on my computer. It could be different on yours, but I went to centimeter, not millimeter, and this makes a huge difference. So I go ahead and hit OK. And this time we have a female character, which is a lot different from uh, my male character that I usually typically use in class. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and just go ahead and get used to interface zooming in and out. Uh, and if you zoom in over here, it's gonna zoom in there. So make sure your cursor is where your target, where you wanna zoom in and zoom in uh, on your left side. Uh, right click and hold your mouse on a three mouse button. Just go ahead and click and to uh, rotate. And also on the left side, you can also zoom in and out with the middle mouse scroll wheel, if you have a scroll wheel. Uh, if you want to oscillate, I think it's option on a Mac and left mouse hold, and it turns into a kind of hand uh, icon and you can oscillate to move to where you need. So these are three really important things you need to do once you're uh, trying to get your pattern in the right spot. All right, so what we're gonna do is go ahead and get our polygon tool, click on it. And uh, I'm not gonna do the, the mirroring thing right now. I'm just gonna go ahead and make a very simple uh, pattern. So I'm gonna go here and go ahead. Make the neckline. Again, uh, you see this purple line pop up. It kind of tells you uh, keep the same height, that's kind of a nice uh, feature. Uh, so it doesn't go too far because that line is, we'll go to the other side and match up, but we're gonna just do it by eye. Okay, just kind of hug the silhouette of the hips there. Kind of eyeball it so it's kind of even. And again, we'll get into uh, symmetry down the road. Do one more here, make sure it's at the same level. See the purple line pop up, that's good. And we're gonna go all the way up here and see the yellow dot. You may not see it with this recording, but yellow dot and click. 
and that makes it into a flat or kind of a pattern piece that we're going to use. All right, again, uh, right click, and what we want to do is kind of push that back a little bit more, and uh, you can use kind of your uh, this kind of the move tool to trans uh, transform pattern. So we can select it, and uh, you can kind of see. Uh, the world coordinates, uh, see if they make sure they're correct. And if they're not, this is really, 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 really important. Go to Preferences, Gizmo, make sure it's on world coordinate. I'm going to go ahead and show you what sh screen coordinate looks like. So you can see if I try to push it back, it's going to go in the right and to the left. Totally wrong. Make sure you go to Preferences and go to world coordinate. This is the same coordinate system that we use in Maya and a little bit of ZBrush. All right, so I'm going to push it. Don't go uh, too far back. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, select our pattern here in Command C uh, on your uh, Mac, or you can go Edit and Copy uh, if you want to go old school. Uh, so we select it, uh, Command C, and then Command V, and you can see kind of it uh, floating there. Uh, I want to put it down, and I'm going to kind of move this back in space. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate that around. And then uh, for that one, I'm gonna go ahead, hold down my shift and place it over like so. All right, so I have this selected and I wanna flip horizontally the normals or the faces or the texture of the fabric is facing inward on this one, so we have to flip it out. I think I, the one I did in class today kind of showcased uh, it sh showing up as a gray or dark black. So I'm going to uh, right click, flip horizontal. All right. And then now what we're going to do is I'm going to zoom in, or I'm gonna zoom out, I'm sorry, and uh, get both of these in the frame. And so what we're going to start doing is stitching uh, these two together. All right. So sometimes it takes a couple of tries to figure this out. Uh, so we got segment. Uh, sewing and we also got edit sewing if you need to. So we're going to click on here and we're going to click here and also to the top. Now if you go to the bottom you'll see it crisscross and that's not what we want. Make sure uh, both places where you're sewing that indicates where you're starting your sew from top to bottom. I don't want to click and you want to make sure this is the first time this has worked on me. So usually I have to click here and maybe go over to the other side Sometimes it doesn't always work. So you want to make sure these aren't twisted or that these red lines aren't twisted and going on the other side and you instantly have a wrong uh, issue. So you may have to click, not here, but maybe on the other sides. So sometimes that always doesn't work. So when I click here, go back over here, and you can see it twist here. Don't want that. Go up to the top, uh, click. All right, I'm going to hit my uh, control right and I'm going to spin around. You can see it looking pretty healthy. All right, so now we're going to um, go down here and do some more sewing. Uh, click, click, all right, click, click, all right, alt. And I did not soften these edges. I should have, um, I don't know if it's too late, but uh, let's go ahead and keep going. Click, click, all right, and click. All right, so we've got it pretty good, and I am trying to soften this up and see if it's possible. It may reject me. Uh, I'm going to go to Edit Pattern, go up to my thing, Convert to Curve Point, click on that, Convert to Curve Point, right-click, Convert to Curve Point, Curve Point. And again, I selected this second one, so we're going to Edit Points. And you can see it's kind of a Bezier curve, very similar to uh, uh, ah, Control Z, undo that. You can, maybe that wasn't a good idea. But anyways, you should have done that before. Uh, when you do your next one, try to improve that. So again, convert the curve. And it's going to look awful like the other one, but just kind of showing how to relax this curve. So it looks a little wonky. Should have uh, done that before we uh, start stitching it. You can also do the same over here. Okay. 
little bit more uh, natural flow instead of these hard, harsh lines. Okay, so it looks a little, little wonky. Oh, that's all right. So now what we want to do is, uh, all we're doing is practicing this. I want you to do it once or twice and do a screenshot and show me the next class. And right here in the upper left hand, it looks like a little downward uh, arrow. Just click on it. Hopefully this works. As you can see it kind of snug in and has kind of this snug uh, look to it. All right. So go in. You see it already does kind of some natural wrinkles and so forth. Uh, you can see the back is pretty good. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, probably has something to do when we uh, relax uh, the edging here. But overall, it's pretty good. We'll be able to export that soon and then bring that to ZBrush and do a little bit more of UV mapping and coloring of this. Uh, all right, so stop there. Once you get it here, just do a real quick screen grab. And again, you guys know how to do that. That's Command Control Shift 4. Screen grab it, uh, paste it into Photoshop um, just to show me that you've done it. Uh, I'll be worrying, waiting for a student that has a very lanky character. I'm going to create a long shirt and then also pants for the next tutorial. All right, good luck.